What's going on, guys? Welcome to Rhino Review Stuff. I'm Rhino, and I review stuff. And the stuff I've got to review today is brand spanking new. It just started shipping after a pretty successful Kickstarter. And I got it sitting over here on this table behind me. You can see right here, I have the WizMaker P1 3D printer. And hey, look, there's my chair. <laughs> but it's a pretty exciting new printer. It, Like I said, it just got off a of Kickstarter. Those folks are just starting to receive theirs. I ordered mine from Amazon. Amazon, just in case I feel like returning it, which sometimes I am prone to do after getting one of these 3D printers. However, I've got a lot of high hopes for this. I started following it back when it first hit Kickstarter. Um, I saw the reviews from Just Vlad, and I thought it looked really awesome. A lot of the features on there sound really cool, like it's got a halo heated bed, which uh, means basically it only heats up the part of the bed that is actually being printed on, so it saves on energy costs there. And then it's also got automatic bed leveling, and it's like a 3D leveling system, and it's got 16 different points. It's got a direct drive there. There are a lot of things that are really cool on this that aren't found on other 3D printers in this price range. So I'm really looking forward to it. This is the first real big, like major 3D printer that I've purchased for myself. Uh, you might be able to see back there on the table. I do have another 3D printer. That's the Annette ETX4. And it's a pretty darn good printer. I did pay for that one myself. It was about a hundred bucks and it is about as bare bones as you can get but it does work really, really well. Um, I haven't done a review for that one yet because I totally destroyed the hot end on my second print and it was all my fault. I know how to fix it, but you know what? I got this fancy 3D printer and now I actually canceled my order for the new hot end for that one. <laughs> So I'm going to be uh, selling that one off to one of my buddies. Um, I've already told him what parts to get, and he's looking forward to having a brand new 3D printer for himself to begin on. And I am looking forward to this WizMaker P1 for a brand new, like, next level 3D printing experience for the Rhino. So let's get into this unboxing, first couple of prints, and then we'll come back for a review. So I am scooted about a foot and a half away farther than I usually am. So I'm not sure how well you're actually going to be able to hear me, but I will speak up a little bit and hopefully this part of the video will actually make a little sense because I will try to talk loudly for you. So uh, I'm going to switch to my other camera. It is a brand new webcam that was also sent to me. And um, yeah, we're going to see what that one's like so I can use some of this footage in that review. And uh, we're going to get this thing set up. So switching now, there we go. Uh, you can see this is only 30 frames per second, whereas my main camera there is 60. But let's get started. All right, packing's pretty good. Got the instruction manual here, the WizMaker P1. I will be using this to help me put it together. Got a power cable. We've got the touchscreen LCD here. Looks like we've got the direct drive extruder here, and you click this button, and it should open up the lid, like so. So you can easily access all the internals there and move things along if needed. Very nice. We've got the filament arm, which we'll mount on top. I like that these screws are actually already on there. Just got to loosen them up and set it in place. That's awesome. Very nice metal here and plastic here. It's not 3D printed. That's actual plastic that's been molded. Well, that's nice. We've got our teeny tiny round of, you know, junk filament. This stuff will probably go in the bin pretty soon. All right, check that out. We've got dual Z axis here, one of the other selling points of it. We just got to mount up the extruder to that spot right now. And you can see it does roll along nicely. I'll have to peel off all the tape and stuff. Looks pretty good. Next thing we've got here is the magnetic build plate. It does have one of those textured surfaces. It's not PEI, but it looks uh, very similar to what you would find on an Ender 3. And yowch! <laughs> just pinched my finger. Uh, it's pretty darn magnetic. All right, last thing out of the box is the actual machine here that uh, has all the controls and all the computer components. It does have a ribbon cable here. Luckily, this appears to be in pretty good shape. It's got some 3M tape here to tape it down. And we got another dangling wire there. On the back of the unit, 
we've got our power button here. Uh, this is the USA model, so I don't think there's anything for me to be uh, fiddling around with. I won't be having to poke in there with a screwdriver to change anything. At least I don't think I will. And it does appear to be already set to 115 volts. So yes, inside here, there actually is a little place where you can uh, stick something in and move that around to adjust it, depending on your location. Let's scroll over there on this side. Check it out. We got our drawer with all of our screws and accessories. Ooh, got a nice pair of clippers here. Pakofk. Pakofk. Model 170 pliers. Yeah, nice pruning. We got a couple of zip ties here to hold all the cables in place. Got two M416s. We got our tools. We've got three hexagon socket flat round head M48s. Got an extra nozzle here. It does not say what size it is, uh, but that's a pinhole right there. We got some M440s, and here we've got our SD card and our SD card reader adapter thingy. I'd also like to point out here on the front of the device, we do have a full size SD card slot and we've got our USB-C port. Now this is the point where I'm going to shut up completely and I'm just going to totally fast forward, get this thing put together and get it running on its first print. And I'll tell you how that went. All right, I've done a little bit of prep work already. I've got a couple of tips here on my little screwdriver. Got them all set up in the baggies so they are all appropriate and they are easy to find. I'm gonna take as little time on this as possible. Step one, put the gantry on the frame. Actually, it appears to slot in pretty good. I'm just scoot this off the table and actually get it attached. to my first snag. You can see right here we've got a z-axis motor on the right hand side of the unit and there is no cable coming up out of this little hole. So I have tried to disassemble this top part. I've taken the screws out of here and this piece here is not budging. So I've taken all of them out of this piece here and uh, yeah this plate's not budging either. So now I am working on taking all of the screws out of the bottom here and hoping I don't have to completely disassemble it just to put that little line back through that little hole. That's kind of sad. All right, I got the base plate removed and you can see right inside there, that's the little wire that needs to go back through that hole. And I am hoping there is enough room that I can just push that thing through to the other side. <sighs> Let's see how it goes. There it is. Can it slide through? Sorry for this terrible camera angle. I'm holding my camera with one hand and uh, trying to push this through with the other. There we go. Yes, I made it through. Oh my goodness. I was, I was not a happy camper there. Now I gotta put all these screws back in place. So these are from the top part. 
Uh, these that are hiding out in there, they hold on the power. And uh, those ones back there, those ones all hold on the bottom plate here. So yeah, there's you a good look at that power supply in case you were interested in that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, another thing I wanna point out is the power supply here is physically attached to this base plate. So if you have taken the screws out of this, trying to remove it and be able to, uh, you know, get into the bottom here, yeah, you've pretty much just dismounted this. So yeah, my advice, don't mess with any of these, just mess with these. This has become quite the hassle. Now, before we get into the final part of the review here, let's talk about the actual user interface here on the little touch screen. We've got the usual buttons, we've got print, we can do control, changing the temperatures, changing the settings, and the whiz features. The whiz features are the LED, you can turn that on and off, and ASR, that's the voice recognition. I have it turned off right now because uh, I've already recorded this once, and as I was talking to the camera, the whiz maker was responding, and yeah, it got really annoying, and I kept having to tell it to cancel. So yeah, the voice recognition on here works really well. I will show that at the very end of the video. On the settings here, you've got pretty much everything. You can save the settings, you can read new settings that you put on the SD card, and you can read it, reset everything to default there. We've got the display mode, select one of the patterns. I'm gonna go to advanced, and this will change the way things look. We now have an advanced setting here. You can change motion, preheating, auto and the bed settings. Info here, there's their contact. It is the WizMaker P1 and it does tell you what version the firmware is. Under controls, you can move it however you want to. I like this because it's got this little gamepad looking thing here and you can adjust it. You can change how many millimeters things move. Um, this right here is very handy, especially if you just wanna move the Z axis up a teeny tiny smidge. And uh, yeah, right now you can see the Z is at 4.9 millimeters off of the bed. It's, 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 yeah, it's right there. Auto home, auto leveling works great. You can disable the stepper so you can move everything around. And we've got the temperatures here. You can tell it what temperature to be everything. And uh, yeah, you can preheat to PLA. Um, well, let's cancel that. You can go to your print here. This pulls up all of the files that are actually on your little SD card. I do not have the SD card installed right now. It's over there on my computer. I'm putting some more files on it to get some more printing done. And of course, here is the skull that I printed off. This was supposed to be a 10 hour and 14 minute print. It printed off in eight hours and 34 minutes. This was created by Jim Overton and uh, I absolutely love it. It's got the seam here, goes along the top and onto the back. You can see there are teeny tiny little bits where there was some over extrusion, but not so much. Overall, this is like silky, silky smooth. He looks gorgeous. Only flaws, of course, are where the uh, supports were actually holding in place. So I can go over that with a little, little bit of sandpaper and make this guy look beautiful. But other than that, this is just a fantastic print. Really shows you what this thing is capable of. It has been 12 days since I unboxed, put together, and first started printing with the uh, WizMaker P1 back there. It didn't respond to me that time. I'm re-recording this because it started talking back to me. The voice control on it is actually pretty good. Once I got used to how to speak to it, it uh, yeah it does what I intend it to do. In the manual, it does come with a list of different phrases you can say, and it tells you what they will do. Every one of them that I have tried so far has worked just fine. On the print quality, 
amazing prints right out of the box. My very first print was the default like little dog that you print off, and it came out okay. All of the things that I've done myself, however, with the exception of three, and I'll tell you about those here in a second, have come out flawless, like literally flawless. Well, except one. He, he had a few flaws. My tardy grade, and I'll show you the flaws there. But setting it up in Cura is kind of a big deal because the profile that ships with the printer is just in draft form, so you can't actually use the profile that it shipped with, which kind of sucks. So you set this thing up as an Ender 3, and then you go in and you change your extruder distance and things like that, and you can get some pretty awesome prints. Also, there's something called the Fat Dragon Gaming. Um, they've created a profile for the Ender, and it works extremely well. Um, it is very, very high quality, so it is very, very slow to get the printing done. However, I did find the Wizmaker back here actually took a lot less time than it said in Cura. And by that I mean on a 14 hour print, it ended up only taking 12 hours, which I kind of like, took about two hours off. And on one of these other prints here, the skull, which I'll show up underneath my overhead here in a second, it said it was going to take 10 hours and like 12 minutes, and it took eight hours and 34 minutes. And I've got a time lapse of that, which you already saw. So print quality, Absolutely astounding right out of the box. You just got to get it set up right in Cura. If you guys are interested in seeing anything about that, let me know. And I might do a follow-up video where I kind of show my Cura settings. I mean, I'm not a wizard at all, but I did make a few changes and I think they really helped me out. So let's take a look at some of the prints that I've made. Move my mouse out of the way. Um, let's start in order. So my very first print. This is the print that comes with the printer. This is a very teeny tiny little dog. It does have all of the details though. You can see some layer lines, especially here on his belly. You can kind of see in that little circle there. That's where the initials usually are when you print one of these off. Tail looks good. The top of the tail did flick off. It had a little bit of uh, stringing going on, so I was trying to wipe that. And I did end up flicking the tail off. It does have his hair. It do have his ears. And really, it's a pretty decent print, but it's also as big as my thumbnail. <laughs> so, yeah, print number one. It was a success, but it was very, very small. Print number two. I printed off the little dog in a larger scale. This one's the one that has the base on it. I am not familiar enough with how to use the different settings in Cura to actually slice this in a different way to remove the base. So I just printed it with the base. It took less than two hours, and this is pretty darn good looking. He's got all of his little details. There's no stringing. There was no overhangs that were having issues. He just came out really, really well. Print number three. So print number three was actually a fail, and it was an intentional fail. I started printing off this skull here, and I didn't use the supports in Cura like were suggested by the creator of that skull. I just wanted to see what it would print right off the bat. So it started printing the uh, little pieces that actually touched the build plate, and of course they popped off. And yeah, that was an intentional fail. Next thing, what did I print? Oh yeah, my usual print right here. I always have to print Surprised Patrick. <laughs> I absolutely love this print. The detail on his clothes came out fine. You can see his pupils there. Uh, he does have a tongue in there if the lighting was just right. I tried to get this matte black here, so I thought it would show up a little bit better on camera. He turned out flawless. Absolutely perfect. There's no major layer lines. There's no problems here in the, the, with the overhangs inside of his mouth. This is printed support free. So yeah, surprise Patrick. After that, I thought, well, I've got my settings done pretty good. What can I do now? So I printed this guy. This is the red-eyed alligator skink or red-eyed crocodile skink. I can't remember off the top of my head. I did print this with supports, so there's a little bit of nastiness inside here. Um, I just wanted to see what it was like. He does not need supports. He is absolutely flawless. Check it out, like every link, even making that mistake and printing with supports, he still turned out great. Got a little bit of my hair there. Yeah, I just love this. Check out the little paws. Look, it has a little paws. They came out great. So yeah, very successful. I will leave the link in the description for this little guy, because he's great. So after that one, I thought I'd print something a little bit harder. 
This is the Tardigrade, and this is the one with the little short stubby legs. All of the body sections move as expected. They can rotate around, and there's a little head right there. His legs are all movable except for on the second body section. I'm not sure why that is, but you can see there they did have a little bit of issues. You can see I did go ahead and pull it out, and yes, I did snap it off, but that's okay. It's glued in place. He can be posed, and other than that second section, yeah, he came out great. It's a tardy grade. After that, I wanted to try out a moving model. This is a catapult. You just kind of toss your stuff on there and go pew, pew. Works really well. Uh, the only thing that I had issues with is the peg that holds this part into place. It did kind of snap off. I'm not sure if that was my fault or if it was just a printing error, but check out the, uh, check out the finish there. So that's what the build plate leaves on your pieces. And I think it looks pretty cool. Because of the way this was printed, it was on both sides. You can see there are very minimal layer lines. There's not any ghosting. You can see there's the seam right there. I think it turned out fantastic. And yes, it's completely functional. Here's one of my failed prints. This was a sword. You can see where the sword was attached. I intentionally printed this sword standing up just to see how far it would go. Um, I got about an inch and a half up to where it got to the, uh, the crossbar there on the hilt. And yeah, then it, then it failed miserably, but I did get this neat little coin out of it. My next print there was the useless sword. Uh, you probably, if you go back a couple of days, you can check out the video of this. It just kind of flops around. It is completely useless. It is one of my other favorite prints. I always print it off on every new printer just to see how it turns out. And just for reference, here is the print on the Ender 3. And uh, yeah, they both turned out really good, but I felt more confident in printing it on the Wizmaker, so I made it much larger. So I increased it to, I think, 145%, and this is the 100% print. And yeah, the 100% print on the Ender 3, with all of my settings as good as I could possibly get them, still came out a little bit crunchy. This one here, it's like butter. The Wizmaker did a great job. Next print here was the Shark. This one is the one that's got... Uh, Little two pieces in between each one to hold them into place. I wanted to have it a little bit uh, more sturdy. All of the parts here move perfectly. I've seen on videos where the mouth um, apparently gets stuck for some people. Uh, I did this and the mouth popped right open. So yeah, Wizmaker did a great job on this. So not only does this thing give astounding prints pretty much right out of the box, it does have the voice control as I mentioned a few moments ago. Wow, that was some intense white balance shifting there. Uh, yeah, it's in the book here. It is two pages across. Um, you can say, hello, Wizmaker. Hi, I am coming. And I don't know how well you heard that. You can actually turn the volume up. Um, volume up. Max volume. Maximum volume. <laughs> so you can probably hear that now. Let's see here. Light on. Light on. Light off. Light off. You can also control the leveling this way. I'm not going to do that now because it is nice and leveled as it is. You can also turn the steppers on and off so you can move the plate around and lift the z-axis and all of that good stuff. Let's see here. Print first file. Do you confirm to print the first file? Confirm. It works extremely well. Um, volume down. Volume down. Volume down. Volume down. Mute. Mute mode. Yeah, it didn't say anything because now, now she's being very quiet. <laughs> but I think that is fantastic. You can hear it behind me there, warming itself up. It volume up. Volume down. Volume down. Mute mode. 
<laughs> she, she's very sensitive. And yes, you can turn that setting off. And it does come in very handy turning it off, especially when you're in front of a camera doing a video and it starts talking back to you. But other things that you need to know in this manual here, they do have some suggested settings to use with Cura, and they do tell you about the different line widths and all of that stuff. Um, I do recommend printing with three walls, especially if you're going to be printing something that is larger and you're not using a lot of infill. Definitely adjust those infill settings. There is a really cool video that I watched. They, I think they just put it out a couple of weeks ago. I will leave a link to that too if I remember to do so. And uh, yeah, check out how they set up their settings. I don't think there's much more to say here. There are very few negatives here. Like there's literally nothing I can say bad about this. There is nothing discouraging about this. If I had gotten this as my very first 3D printer, I would be in love with 3D printing more so than I am now. I mean, this thing works fantastic. It just works. And I don't think there's anything more you can ask for for a 3D printer. I'm very, very impressed. Definitely Rhino approved. And I would not mind having a couple more just like this to uh, start my own farm. I have sold my Ender 3 and I did sell my CR6 SE so I could afford this guy. And um, it was definitely well worth it. Definitely well worth it.